Hello, hope you're having a good Christmas. Who would have thought the two jetty cans from the previous video would come in handy for this video because that that there is standing on two jetty cans for the benefit of this video. It's not about this chimney, um, or it's not about this chimney because this is the Repro Soldier Fortune chimney that you saw about a month or so ago. What this video is about, it's about World War One British Army body armour. And what I've got is this. Um, what this is, it's a kind of over the head jerkin, like a cuirass. And how it goes, which is the benefit of this thing, is like this. Now just bear with me a minute or two. Okay. Now that goes like that. Now that goes like that and it fastens around the waist by a, a kind of tab with two buckles. The two black metal buckles are stamped Paris and there's a serial number on them. Um, the inside of this vest has an English army outfitters address on it. What this is, it's 1916 pattern Anglo-British soldiers body armor and um, I say Anglo-British is because it's made in France sent to Britain to be commercially sold to relatives of soldiers serving on the front line there is a YouTube video on experimental British body armor from World War One and this particular pattern is shown in period photographs but it's not really experimental it's just that body armor in World War One wasn't really an issue thing there were many different companies making it and it was mainly for psychological reassurance rather than actually being bulletproof so what we've got it's a kind of tan uh, webbing or tan cloth backing which is held it's kind of two two pieces of tan cloth which are held together it's kind of say that's the head it's held together by buckles and then as it comes down around the waist there's another couple of buckles and straps so at the top there's one two is this in the video yeah one two three four buckles at the shoulder there's a buckle at the waist and a buckle at this side they're all black metal they're all stamped paris with a serial number on it on this webbing cloth there's the series of metal plates chin scales um, each each metal plate is held together by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kind of eight eight kind of loop links, and each one is held to each other above it, below it, and beside it. Now the whole chain mail section, as it were, is held to the vest by a series of rivets which go directly through the plate in places straight through the cloth and um, what's missing from this example is an optional accessory in that the same material could be privately purchased as a set of shoulders and a neck piece as well and obviously there's a set of genetic goggles that go with it but really really rare item it didn't offer much in the way of ballistic protection it was mainly for for shrapnel and for psychological purposes i mean you hit that with a bullet it will probably not only would the bullet do damage but the, the shards of metal from the metal plate would also damage the person as well and if you turn it around the side you see around the side you've got this strap again with the black metal buckle and the back kind of repeats what's on the front and on the back can you, I don't know if you can see that it's upside down but we'll take the camera off and have a look at it it's got the English kind of uh, tradesman's shop label this isn't the label of the people who manufactured it this is the the, the, the company that would actually retail it so what we'll do is we'll take the camera off and we'll have 
a look around it. There's no, there's no great, great weight to it because, as I've, as I've said, it's mainly for, for psychological purposes. You know, a relative would say the loved one was in the trenches in the First World War. They'd purchase something like this and they'd go, "I've sent this to you. Please wear it." Or the soldier himself would see it in a newspaper or something like that, and they would send for one. Very rarely were these things on general issue. That's why there were that many variants during the First World War. So, hopefully, due to the method I've got that camera set up, if it doesn't switch itself off, we'll have a look around this. So, what we've got, that's, that's how it sits at the front. Well, I haven't fastened the waist buckles because, you know, this, this dates from 1916. It's now, what, 1916, 2016, 17, 18. It's now 100 and 102 years old, something like that. And if we do a close-up of the buckles, you're not going to be able to see the maker's details, but in there, kind of deeply recessed in there, it says Paris, and there's a set of serial numbers. And the actual metal plates, as it were. These are the bits that hold the metal plates to each other. And then around you have the rivets. And you see there's a bit of a gap between the cloth and the plates. And then around the side you've got the additional little buckle that buckles up. You've got the shoulder buckles and around the back it basically repeats the detail that's on the front. And on the underside you have the retailer of the piece which is, um, hold on a second, what we'll do is we'll remove it from our dummy and we'll put it on there like that. So you can see the arm plate, that's, that's kind of the neck. And on the underside back flap you have the English retailer which reads Army Agents WH Gore & Co 64 Haymarket London SW so that's the retailer who would sell it inside the bit that goes against the uniform you can see the back of how the rivets come through and fix to the cloth that's the back. And let's see if we close up of the details on the shoulder strap areas where the buckles go through. You have these really nice little buckles. And on Stamp with a serial number and the word Paris. So that's 1916 Anglo British private purchase body armour. Quite a nice find.